we have to snap the ball because we can't punt here. T.Y. Hilton beats his man. Is he going to get there in time? He is! T.Y. Hilton down the field. That's the first time we've hit him down the field today and it's for six points. is week one of the 2019 Colts franchise here on Madden 24 and we face the Jacksonville Jaguars in our opening game. A couple quick things to get to just before we jump into the game, mostly just roster related. In the last episode, we signed three free agents. It was Eric Decker at wide receiver. It was Chris Johnson at running back. And then it was D'Angelo Hall at cornerback. Um, having looked into it, they all retired in like 2017. Um, so I've just dropped them all from the roster. Um, I thought since they were included in this um, custom-made roster that they must have been available to teams in 2019, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, we're trying to keep things as realistic as possible, so I've just dropped those guys and uh, replaced them with just bottom of the roster um, filler, basically. Um, I've changed a couple of overalls and dev traits and things like that as well, just so I, the roster, the Colts roster at the very least, is a bit more in line with what I think it was in 2019. So, Braden Smith was upgraded slightly. He went up to a 78 overall. Ryan Kelly was also upgraded slightly. He went up to an 80 overall. If I have increased a player, I've typically increased primarily their awareness just to bump the overall up, um, though not exclusively their awareness. And I have tended to drop the ratings of another player. Um, so I'm not trying to make the Colts roster as good as it can possibly be just to win easily in year one. Um, so I have kind of tried to balance it somewhat by taking away from elsewhere when I am adding to certain players. Um, I have taken away some dev traits as well as added them as well. So Dontrell Inman, um, I actually lowered significantly. I think he was a 79 overall star dev player. I've just made him a 74 overall normal dev. Um, I think that might have been it on offense. Oh, Jack Doyle I took from star dev down to normal dev as well. Chester Rogers maybe was star dev. I don't remember exactly. He might just be the same. Did the same on defense. Danico Autry, I increased a little bit up to a 78. He was very good for the Colts around this time. Um, they easily could have re-signed him rather than letting him go to the Titans. Um, but they didn't. They chose to let him walk. But he was a, he had earned a contract with the Colts, really. Performed very well. Um, Grover Stewart I dropped from a superstar dev down to a star dev I think superstar dev for Grover Stewart at this point in time is probably a little bit much um, 2020, 2021 um, maybe he deserved he'd earned that superstar dev trait but probably not at this point to be honest um, Anthony Walker I believe was star dev but you talked about switching Zaya Franklin and Anthony Walker's overall before Darius Leonard I did bump up to a superstar dev Clayton Gathers, I dropped, I think, a couple of points in overall and took away his star dev. Um, and I think that might be it for defense. I feel like there was one more on offense, but I can't remember who it was at this point. So I think I must just be remem uh, misremembering, rather. But this is going to be the team going into week one and the team, obviously, um, going forward. So offense and then defense and then speed. Uh, specialists, yeah, we have Kenny Moore in the slot, Chester Rogers in the slot, um, Danico Autry shifting inside on rushdowns, things like that. Kamoko Toure um, coming in on rushdowns as well. So, without further ado, let's get into our first game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It is at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. So, a big divisional matchup to kick things off. I am going to go with Kansas City's offense, I think, in this particular franchise mode but we'll stick with Indy's defense for now so Lucas Oil Stadium the Indianapolis Colts the Jacksonville Jaguars week one of the NFL season is here teams are about to emerge from the tunnels led of course by Andrew Luck he has not come out of retirement he never retired in this particular universe this is going to sound weird to a lot of American viewers I imagine more Americans will watch this than Brits. And I hear all kinds of crazy pronunciations of Jaguars. 
Jaguars, Jaguars, even Jaguars is how it's pronounced. Just in case you didn't know. Blake Bortles leading them out with quarterback. 76 overall. 86 overall Leonard Fournette. Again with 31 years of experience. It does feel like he has about 31 years of experience in real life now. Um, Dante Moncrief, a former Colt at wide receiver, along with Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook. Um, Safarian Jenkins at tight end. And then a an offensive line of Eric Flowers, Andrew Norwell, very good. Brandon Linder, very good. Um, Patrick Am Amame. And then Jeremy Parnell rounds out the offensive line. So a decently strong Jags offense, but should certainly be one that we are able to overcome here, I would imagine. I would like to think. We'll start off with a run play, and that is a, a big broken tackle early and a second one almost there. It was Anthony Walker Jr. meeting Leonard Fournette in the hole initially. Couldn't make the tackle. And we'll be running a lot of Tampa 2. This year, we do have Anthony Walker currently in the middle linebacker role. And I mean, that's what he played for the Colts. Big tackle from Kenny Moore in the slot. We might be better off, though, putting Darius Leonard at middle linebacker. If he is going to have to, he's the most suited to carry those routes deep into the, uh, you know, that deep middle area of the field. Much better suit than Anthony Walker Jr. himself. Oh, it's almost there. Read it, Anthony Walker Jr. coming across, and yeah, potentially if that was Darius Leonard, that split second may have allowed him to get there. And it is first and ten around midfield for the Jags. And another completion underneath. A good tackle this time, again by Kenny Moore. And we would be running a little bit of man coverage this season. Although we are going to be much more of a zone team for sure. And it's actually play action. Pierre Desir chasing down the Jags receiver on that right-hand side of the field. Didi Westbrook and Blake Bortles has started out 4 for 4 for 36 yards. We will be allowing a lot of underneath completions. We're just trying not to get beaten over the top. That's how the Colts played in real life. That's how we'll be playing here. It's another run play. Not too much going on there. A couple of yards. Three, I think. And we are going to run cover three and we're going to send the strong safety on a blitz. So Clayton Gethers coming off that right hand side and it looks like it's going to be another run play. A really good juke back but it's Malik Hooker who comes up to meet Leonard Fournette in the hole this time. We are going to pass commit since they are running out of empty and we're going to control Kamoko Toure and it's completed underneath. Kenny Moore's going to have to try and get there. Big completion down to the four. I will not run commit because they could easily run some kind of play action here. And they do exactly that. It's Darius Leonard who comes in for the sack. First sack of the year for the Maniac. I need to get a C on his chest. Something else I need to sort out. So contracts are going to be something big I need to sort out. I had a quick look at the contracts for these teams and they're all over the place really I'm not sure we're going to be able to go around the entire league and sort everybody's contract out but we at least need to make the contract of our players and that's a touchdown that's a touchdown wide open wide open DD Westbrook so a really good first drive from the Jacksonville Jaguars and we're going to have to match it to get back level early here so we're going to be looking for Jack Doyle coming across the formation just for a quick hit in 5 or 10 yards or 5 or 6 yards rather we have a very good run blocking offensive line however we do also have Andrew Luck so we are going to have to be throwing the ball a lot this year 3rd and 3 and Chester Rogers on some kind of a deep dig there yep T.Y. hitting across the middle so it's kind of three passes just short across the middle of the field to start the game. We will start branching out from there. We'll run towards the strong side. Behind Quentin Nelson, basically, who opens up a huge hole for us. And Marlon Mack rumbles forward for seven. It's going to be a tight end wheel here. I do like roots, or I do like uh, 
kind of passing concepts that have at least one shallow crosser, like T.Y. Hilton coming across the formation here. We want to get T.Y. Hilton down the field. We're going to try and hit T.Y. Hilton down the field. We are going to look for Jack Doyle or Eric Ebron underneath if that option is taken away, which it is. Mo Ali Cox is there, though. Just goes down, secures the catch. So we needed from him at that point. Potentially, we could have turned it into more. But I like the option to just go down there. Let's send Chester Rogers up the field. Oh, and that's dangerous. Dontrell Inman it was. Coming across the field that time. Miles Jack lurking in the area. Like the look that we're getting from the defense. And again, I just want to run behind Quinton Nelson. He's up to the second level. Naheem Hines forces through for six yards. It's going to be a third and four. Let's see what happens if we motion Dontro Inman across the formation here. Not very much at all. We actually potentially make it more difficult for ourselves to run to this left-hand side. Really good block from Quinton Nelson. And Marlon Mack takes it up to the Jags 28 yard line and let's hit with play action on first down I don't think they're going to be expecting it T.Y. Hilton or Chester Rogers T.Y. Hilton one on one back of the end zone knocked away let's go with the levels switch here and I'm actually going to put audible to a run that's too inviting not to run on this especially to that Quinton Nelson side that's a great block from T.Y. Hilton in the end we do only pick up three or two even. But a really good block from T.Y. Hilton. Oh, and Eric Ebron is actually uncovered here. Let's just try and hit him quickly. If that linebacker comes across, it's going to be dangerous. But Eric Ebron is wide open. And he's all the way down to the six. Did not cover him. On third down there. And I think we might try and run a screen here. Screen from the six-yard line. That's just, again, too inviting not to run. Look at how light that box is. Easy, easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. There was, like, basically two down linemen there. I think there were three players for the Jags there that were supposed to be down linemen, but one of them was standing. And Naheem Hines gets into the end zone untouched. So, first touchdown of the season goes to our shifty running back, Naheem Hines. And we are on the board, 7-7. And Vinatieri with the kickoff. Into the end zone, but they may take it out. They do take the touchback. I'm going to actually audible into man coverage here. And we've done a horrendous job late. I have no idea who that player was crashing down on that, but... They completely whiffed on the ball. They made such a good break towards the area that the ball was being thrown. And then just didn't try to make a play on the ball when they got there. Bizarre. We've got a feeling this is going to be a run. And it is. Straight up the middle. And Darius Leonard is there. Holds Leonard Fournette up for long enough for a Malik Cooker to come in and finish the job here. And let's pass commit since they are again in empty. We're going to use a who I imagine is Kenny Moore slot left. And Blake Bortles actually keeps it. Gets brought down in the end, I think, by Jabal Sheard. And I'm actually going to commit to the pass. Kamoko Toure trying to apply pressure on this right-hand side. And it is again completed. They've had a couple of big throws and a couple of big catches. On some big downs already today, the Jags. So we'll come out in big nickel. On this first and ten, and we actually have a penalty. I think that's going to be a false start on the Jags. And it is going to be a false start on the Jags. So it's going to come back. And we will just use a Anthony Walker Jr. here. And it actually goes deep down the field. I think we were there a little bit early with Malik Cooker. But it doesn't draw a flag, and it's going to be second and 15. We're going to go cover four quarters. I'm not going to pass commit. Because I think this could easily be a run. It's actually not. It's good coverage. We force a check down. 
And we force Leonard Fournette out of play. Only a three yard gain, third and 12. We could have the stop that we're looking for here. The Jags at midfield, depending on what they pick up, they could well go for it on fourth down. And they do actually run the ball with Leonard Fournette. And he may well have picked up enough that the Jags might go for this from the 34 yard line. It is in field goal range, so it looks like they are going to kick fourth and three. And it's going to be a 51 yarder, so probably the right decision. And they do convert. It's going to be 10 7 to the Jags. It's going to say let's run power here, but that left hand side looks fairly stacked. I don't really love many of our options here, though. I'm going to try play action. And the Jags do sit off just a little. I'm just going to dump it out here to Marlon Mack. We just pick up a couple. That's all we need, though, really. And let's get Chester Rogers trying to create a little bit of space here. And we do get the completion. Dontrell Inman with a chance to do a little something after the catch. Run to the right-hand side. We could have done with a block outside there from Ebron rather than moving up the field. So it's going to be a one-yard loss on first down. I think we're probably going to be looking... I don't like the look of this at all. I'm going to audible to a run. Second and 11. It's probably not the best time to be running, but... We do pick up about 12. Just to dump down into the flat. Marlon Mack makes such a good catch. Bounces off the Jags defender and spins inside. For another pickup of five. That was a, a dangerous throw. Yeah, we're going to run a counter here. We do a good job. Do a good job of blocking initially, but we're forced to run back up the middle. Jack Doyle or T.Y. Hilton. The safeties are back fairly deep, especially on that left-hand side of the field. And I do like T.Y. Hilton. He's going to have to go up and get it. Oh, we almost caught it. Off the hands of the Jaguars' safety. And T.Y. Hilton couldn't haul it in. It's going to be a 57-yarder. But Adam Venateri, I think he's got the leg to make it, though. And we are going to try it. Looks like it should be decent. And it looks like it's got the leg. And it hits the bar. No! The Jags maintain the lead as Adam Venateri's field goal clanks off the crossbar. If it was a 56-yarder, it would have made it. If it was a 55-yarder, it certainly would have made it. But it was 57 yards. And the Jags maintain the lead here at Lucas Oil Stadium. We're going to come out in dime. We're going to commit to the pass. But we are going to pressure... Blake Bortles here. Might be a bit of a kamikaze. And how has he snuck through there? That's absolutely outrageous. And he's still on his feet. Somebody hit the man. Jesus. How has that happened? How has that happened? We sent heat. He kept it for some reason. Who knows? Who knows why he kept it? But he did. And then we whiffed on about three separate hit sticks. And it's going to be another run. It's going to be another big game for Leonard Fournette. And we are really struggling on defense to start this game. Really, really struggling. Especially since we just can't strafe. That's such an issue. Big hit. Doesn't force the fumble. Pierre Desir it was laying the wood. So first and ten for the Jags. I think it's going to be another false start. And it is another false start. So it's going to be first and fifteen again. And let's commit to the pass. Oh, I actually really hate it against this particular... Against this particular formation. But Komoko Toure gets in for the sack. The extra rusher was... Was needed. And it was Nate Hairston coming off the slot on that right-hand side. And Komoko Toure, it was... the brought Blake Bortles down I didn't like it I didn't like the call initially it looked like we were going to be outmatched on the left hand side of the field but the pressure gets home and it's a great tackle what a tackle that is 94 who's going to be 94 is that Danico Autry I no I think Danico Autry is 96 
I can't remember who 94 is going to be then. Whoever it was, that was an incredible, incredible tackle. So third and 21. We can commit to the pass and we can drop players back here. Field goal would be fine. And Blake Bortles goes down, takes another sack. Jabul sheared this time. I don't think it's going to be enough to force the Jags out of field goal range. And they are going to try it here. It's going to be another 51 yarder. And we might be in for a block here. We just missed the block. I thought we had the animation there. And oh, I think maybe I dived a split second too late. I think we should have had the block. Uh, let's switch to stick. I still hate it. Still hate it. We only just managed to get it off. We do hit TY on the left-hand side. Everything I audibled into just looked absolutely horrible there. Do you pick up seven on first down, though? I'm not a massive fan of this playbook, to be honest. Um, I mean, it could change as we get more and more used to it, but... There aren't a massive number of plays that look appealing to choose from. I probably should have had more there. I couldn't decide whether to cut it inside or outside with Marlon Mack. Quentin Nelson with a really good block. That should have been more than just a handful of yards that we picked up, though. I mean, some of these plays might be good, and they just... They don't look good in terms of the, uh, you know, the the play concept as represented by the the play art there. They might be better than they look, but they just they they don't they just don't look appealing to me. This is what I like. Chester Rogers rumbling downfield. Debo Samuel is a player that is uh, in the 2019 draft class, a player that we might potentially be looking to draft at the end of this season. And it's plays like that that I think would make him particularly suited to our offense. I do like to run players across the middle of the field often when I play Madden. Let them pick up the ball, let them rumble downfield and try and make somebody miss. Got T.Y. Hilton going down the field on this occasion. Andrew Luck bailing out to the right-hand side and just throws it away. The Jags... Stack in the line of scrimmage. They've got two up in the A-gap. Quite often you can run on this kind of look, though. And we'll see if we can here. We can. Marlon Mack manages to stay on his feet. Only picks up a handful. Four yards. Don't like the look of that, though. Uh, don't like the look of that. We're running low on the play clock already. I might just have to audible to a run of some sort. And just hope we can rumble forward for a few. And I didn't even get the timeout off. Didn't even get the timeout off. So it's going to be a third and 11. It's going to put us in a real bad spot. Let's see what we can do, though. All hope is not lost, certainly. There's Chester Rogers. See, that's exactly what we needed on the last down. But now it's fourth and four at the Jags, 46. CPU want us to punt. I would quite like... To try and pick this up. At the very least. We can. Take the delay of game again. And that just means we're going to have a bit more room to, to punt. To punt from. And I'm actually going to run it here. Fourth and four. At midfield. Naheem Hines. Behind Quinton Nelson. And we've got it. And we've got it. The Jags are just inviting us to run. Down after down. Drive after drive. They are just inviting us to run, and we are obliging. Still haven't really managed to find T.Y. Hilton deep down the field at any point yet today. Yeah, I think if we stick with this Kansas City offense, there are a lot of plays where you can get... where you can kind of scheme people open over the middle. And you can get them in open space. Can we get T.Y. Hilton on some kind of... Oh, I like this. I like this. Let's double team this guy off the edge. Just keep Marlon Mack in. And let's look at T.Y. Hilton here. No, he's going to be covered. Again, we'll just check it down. It's Dontrell Inman. Picks up nine. Down to the two-minute warning. I'm not too disappointed about that because I, I wasn't liking how we were looking there. Lined up against the Jags offense. The, the Jags defense, rather. And Eric Ebron. 
could well just be open up the middle of the field here. And he is, again, wide open. And again, he's going to walk in for a touchdown. Well, I say again, he's going to walk in for a touchdown. Again, he's going to just, you know, walk up the field completely uncovered. That is his first touchdown of the game. But it's the second time the Jags have left Eric Gibron uncovered. And it has punished them both times. This one, particularly so, as he walks in for his first, Andrew Luck's first, and the Colts' second touchdown of this season. So... Pending the extra point, we will take the lead as we approach halftime. And Venetary does convert. So 14-13. I don't... I wouldn't even hate it if the Jags got another field goal here. 16-14 at the half would be absolutely fine. Um, let's go Tampa 2. As long as we don't allow... Oh, man. I just I cannot control these defensive players without strafe. I'm, I might just have to commit to using defensive linemen for this first game. Because I, I simply cannot move the way I need to be able to move if I'm going to do anything in coverage. So I think it's just going to be Kamoko Ture. Come up, come up, come up. Darius Leonard forces Leonard Fauna out of play. Not before he picks up the first down, though. So again, we'll try and rush Blake Bortles with Kamoko Ture. Again, we don't win, but Blake Bortles is forced out. And he does complete the check down to Dee Westbrook. However, it is just a check down. The clock does continue to roll for the Jags. Blake Bortles again forced out. Is he going to be able to get this one off? Just, just about manages to get it off. Don't mind too much if they run up the middle and just pick up the first down here. Blake Port was again forced out. Completely open receiver. We were in Tampa 2 and we had a player wide open in the flat. Why? Why? With two routes on that side of the field. How could that possibly be the case? How could that possibly be the case? Tampa 2 was the ideal coverage for that side of the field. And yet, there's a player wide open. Big hit stick from Anthony Walker. And if we can force them out of field goal range, that would be ideal. So we're going to blitz here with Darius Leonard. And we get a good jump on it. Forced out early. Big, big shot. But what a catch. What a catch again. And the Jags certainly are in field goal range here. Just to check down. Anthony Walker Jr., can't lay the hit stick. Darius Lennon makes the tackle. So just a 40 yarder this time. And they do convert. Six seconds left on the clock. So we do. I mean, we've got an opportunity to do something with the return. And we are going to have enough time to run a single play, you would imagine. Not sure that we will run a play. We'll probably run something like a screen. So we do get a chance from the return here. With Marcus Johnson. Oh, and a hole opened up there for a moment. Don't like the look of that. So let's switch it and see if we like it any more after that. I don't really think we do, to be honest. But we will run the screen anyway and see what we can do. There are blockers. Ryan Kelly. Naheem Hines tries to make a man miss, but can't. I mean, he picked up nine. It wasn't the worst attempt. But it's a 16-14 game at halftime. The Jags do lead. So we do get the ball back after half time. Jags up by two. But we have an opportunity to get on the board again here. And it could be immediately Marcus Johnson just not quite fast enough. We don't have a real ideal kick returner in the team, to be honest. Naheem Hines is, is catching punts for us. Maybe he should be catching the kicks as well. So we will audible to a run and just run it up the middle with Naheem Hines. Who rumbles forward for about 11. The Jags again sitting fairly deep. They have players back in coverage. Are they in man or are they in zone? They're in zone coverage. So potentially we could have something open on the right hand side of the field here. And well we just about get the play off. I don't like it. We're just going to have to throw the ball away. Again, we'll just try and get somebody open running across the field. Probably T.Y. Hilton if we can. And we can. T.Y. Hilton's going to pick it up. 
Can he make a man miss? No, he can't. We're going to run the ball a little bit more in this second half than we did in the first. First, we're going to try and run a screen here with Marlon Mack, though. A screen in the first half, at the very end of the first half with Naheem Hines, was fairly successful. And this one with Marlon Mack is not bad either. He got held up about two yards from the line of scrimmage, but Mark Lewinsky just gave him a, a massive shove in the back and helped him along to pick up those extra couple. It's going to be back-to-back -back plays for Marlon Mack. First a screen. And now we're going to run it down the Jags' throat. Really good blocking up front by the Colts. Offensive line. We had room to work out on the right-hand side of the field there. I think basically we're going to hit T.Y. Hilton or we're going to throw it away. I think those are the two options here. Oh, no. We're going to have to take a timeout. No. I didn't realise there was a motion. That could be a crucial timeout as we near the end of the game. Oh, I don't really like any of this. Marlon Mack, T.Y. Hilton underneath is going to be what we have to do. Just protect the ball. First and goal. I was going to try a quarterback draw there. I don't like those two players lurking in the A-gap for the Jags, though. And I really don't want to fumble here. Marlon Mack, can he fight free? He can't, but he does get down to the two. I'm going to go back to Marlon Mack. It's a heavy formation here for the Jags. Can we hit Chester Rogers on that out instead? Do we want to try? I mean, we've got T.Y. Hilton on the other side as well. And we do go to Chester Rogers. Both players got hands on it. The Jaguars defensive back and Chester Rogers both got hands on it. But the ball falls incomplete in the end. We will go back to the run game here on third down. Third and two. And the Jags send pressure and it's such a good tackle. Quinton Nelson made such a good block. But it was such a good tackle there. We forgot to check out the Jags defense. But I think that's Leon Jacobs who made the tackle. So fourth and goal from the Jags one. Going to run Marlon Mack up the middle and we're just going to hope that we pick it up. And we don't. It's a big stop from the Jags. It's a big stop on their goal line. I was tempted to take another time out and try and get Andrew Luck on a quarterback sneak. But I chose not to. And the Jags make a big, big stop there on fourth down. They are pinned incredibly deep. Make the tackle, make the tackle. Is he in the end zone? He's not in the end zone. How is he not in the end zone there? Jabal Sheard makes the tackle on Leonard Fournette. It looked as if he was in the end zone, but I guess forward progress means that they get it on the one-yard line again. I'm not going to run commit this time. But it is another Jags run and it is another big tackle. This time by Grover Stewart up front. We're going to keep a safety back. Just in case it is a run. Just in case it is a pass. We'd like it to be a run. And it's surely he's in the end zone that time. Surely. How is that on the two? I mean, I guess he goes down on the two. Zaya Franklin had hands on Leonard Fournette. What I thought was in the end zone. He doesn't go down until the two, so... Looked like he was churning his legs and not going too far forward there, though. He could have been called dead. And we're going to cut this outside with Naheem Hines. Again, we don't quite have the speed to get there. Big, big passage of play, though. Jags get the stop, but we do force a three and out and a punt. And we do have the ball in good field position on the Jags 44. Let's run the ball at that Jags double A gap look again. No luck this time, really. Marlon Mack... Tackled for no gain. And again we'll hit. This is Dontrell Inman. Across the middle of the field. We pick up five. We will run the ball. Just try and pick up a couple of yards. Big. Big. Um, block shed effort there by the Jags. And it is fourth and two. From the 36. I'm tempted to go for it again. If we are choosing to go for it, we have to snap the ball. Because we can't punt here. T.Y. Hilton beats his man. Is he going to get there in time? He is! T.Y. Hilton down the field. 
That's the first time we've hit him down the field today and it's for six points. The Jags pressed him at the line of scrimmage. He won off the line, not convincingly, but he did just about win off the, off the line. And it was his speed that really created the separation there down the field. I thought maybe we'd overthrown him slightly. But he does have the speed to get underneath it. Andrew Luck drops it right into the bucket for him. And it is a Colts touchdown. And we're going to go up by five. Potentially we should be going for two here to go up by six instead. There's no real difference between four and five. But there is a big difference between five and six. Um, again, though, I made the decision too quickly and I can't afford to take a time out there to, to go for two. So we'll have to settle for going up by five and just hope that that doesn't come back to haunt us at all in this game. Going to come out for empty again. So again, we will commit to the pass. And again, we will try and rush break Blake Bortles with Kamoko Toure. Completed underneath. Big, big hit from Kenny Moore. I'd like a fumble at some point, please. We've laid a couple of big hit sticks so far today. But I haven't managed to force a fumble yet. Second and six. Is that another false start from the Jags? It would be fantastic if it was. And it is another false start from the Jags. Again, we'll control Komoko to Ray. It's going to be a run play and it's going to be right into the arms of Darius Leonard. Third and ten for the Jags. Could this be another big stop? I might drop Jabal Sheard into coverage here. Leonard Fournette is coming out. Oh, and it's straight down the field. And we have been absolutely burned. That's exactly the route that Tampa 2 is supposed to take away. Keelan Cole for a Jags touchdown. And for the second time today, we've... Um, what is Darius Leonard doing? Why is he breaking down there? We're in Tampa 2. And I believe he was responsible for the deep zone. It would have been him or Anthony Walker. And I, yeah, uh, Darius Leonard, I think, would have been on the left side of the formation there. So the Jags could tie it up here. They're going for two. And it's going to be a pass. And it's going to be a missed pass. Um, Jags looking to, to go ahead by three is what I meant to say. Not tie it up. Looking to go ahead by three. Six of eight for 75 yards and a touchdown for T.Y. Hilton so far today. So, good outing for our number one receiver. We could do with a little more from him in this second half, though, as we approach the fourth quarter of this game. Going to get a little more from him here. A little more is going to turn into quite a lot more. Second and one. And that opens up a beautiful beautiful opportunity for play action here on second and one. See where hit one down the field. Chester Rogers down the field. Jack Doyle on the out along with Marlon Mack. Don't like it. I'm going to try and hit Chester Rogers anyway. It's going to sail out of bounds. I mean, I don't hate that. And we're just going to try and convert for a first down here on third and one. Good blocks up front again by Anthony Costonzo and Quinton Nelson. And Marlon Mack does indeed pick up the first down. I think we can try and while away some of this clock. I like our chances of scoring a little bit more than the Jags. And I like our chances of getting one more stop in this game at some point on defense. So I think if we can limit the number of possessions that the Jags have, I think we're going to be able to get one more stop. I like our chances of winning. We're going to go Eric Ebron, and he makes a big, big catch. It was a risky pass. The safety was coming down, but I thought we had the time to get it there. And indeed we did. You snap the ball with one second left on the play clock. Just two yards for Marlon Mack. Let's try another screen. Screens have been working very well so far. It's a screen against double A gap, though. I'm not sure how well that will work. So I'm actually going to go with stick. T.Y. Hilton coming across. Or Eric Ebron on the other side. And we do have T.Y. Hilton in that window. Takes a big shot. 
But he does manage to hang on. We could have Eric Ebron deep here. I'm going to keep Naheem Hines in to block. And we actually are just going to hit. I think that's T.Y. Hilton again underneath. He's just going to duck out of play this time. Actually going to audible to a run though. So I like the look of that better against this Jags front. They do send a little bit of pressure with the linebacker. Three yards a mile on Mac though. He's already carried the ball 19 times today. And we will just let the clock run and enter the fourth quarter. So Jags up by a point. Very, very close game. We are still going to target Dontrell Inman. But that's taken away. Just going to have to try and dump it out here. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. I was pressing RB. I was pressing RB there. I have no idea why he didn't throw it. The running back got caught up on one of the Jags players. But RB was still an option. That still should have been available to throw. And instead it doesn't let me. We take... A big sack and it's third and 13 all of a sudden. A field goal here isn't really ideal. We do have Eric Ebron wide open over the middle though. Jags again just failed to cover him. Three times now today. Eric Ebron is laughing. He is just not being covered. We're going to audible to a run. And we will just about get the snap off. Marlon Mack cuts it back up the middle. Just a single yard on the attempt this I like the look of quarterback draw Andrew Luck straight up the middle why are you running backwards why are you running backwards why would he ever possibly need to do that how can that possibly be what happens on that play he snaps the ball run turns and starts running the opposite direction at this point, I'm pointing up on the left stick. I'm pointing towards the end zone. And he decides instead to turn around and run back towards his own end zone. That's, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Good blocks. Good blocks. Does he get there? He's down at the one. And again, we're going to have to make a decision. This time I'm going to go with the decision I should have made the first time. And it's going to be an Andrew Luck quarterback sneak. To that right-hand side. They've got two right in that gap. Doesn't matter. Andrew Luck is in. Touchdown Colts. And I think we are going to go for two on this occasion. It puts up by a touchdown. So obviously makes a lot of sense. And again, look at the light box for the Jags. But, uh, this is this is a little bit harsh because I think one of their defensive linemen is back as a linebacker. Look at 94. It's going from a two-point stance down to a three-point stance. We're going to run it anyway. And we're going to walk it in with Naheem Hines. Feels a little bit cheesy, maybe. On one hand, it feels cheesy. On the other hand, I kind of don't care. We're up a touchdown. So we are up a touchdown. 29-22. Well into the fourth quarter now. 11 and a half minutes to go. I said, I like us to score again, and I like us to get one more stop. If we can get a stop here, and if we can get anything on our next possession, I don't really see how we lose this game. Even a field goal would be fine. We go up 10. And it would be late in the fourth quarter by then. It's going to be a run. We are going to be absolutely mauled at the line of scrimmage. And Leonard Fournette is going to rumble forward for a gain of 11. Going to get a little bit more aggressive now. A little bit more cover three. A little bit less cover two. Moko Toure doesn't manage to win. And again we whiff on the tackle. I've got to get better at that. I've got to get better. We had him lined up for the hit stick of all hit sticks there. And we, we let him run right past us. I will get better at that. Oh, big shed from Grover Stewart and from Anthony Walker. Gets across really well. But broken tackle from Leonard Fournette yet again. I don't like this call at all. 
Yep. Big hit stick. Malik Cooker. Jags are moving it though. They're already down to the 34. When we have sent pressure, it's it's forced sacks more often than not. Again, big hit stick. Pierre Desir this time. Again, we can't force the ball free. The Jags absolutely moving it. Absolutely moving it at this point. Sending both linebackers. Darius Leonard gets across. Oh, and it's just... We have players there to make the tackle. And we just can't. Missed tackles today. Darius Leonard does so well to force him wide. I mean, it was a stretch play, but... Darius Leonard was there in the hole to meet him. Forced him wide. We had two players there. One gets blocked and one just misses. That's 29 all. So I said I fancied us to make one more stop. It's not going to be that particular occasion. Let's take it out again here. I don't mind the decision. We get up to the 25 where we would be if we didn't take it out. TY's got 9 for 109 in the touchdown. We need a little bit more from him in this last quarter. We're going to win the game. It's probably going to come down to another TY hit on completion or two. Ah, uh, the blocks were, were decent. We just couldn't hold them for quite long enough. I'm just going to run the ball again. Yeah, two inviting. Two inviting from the Jags here. We get another five. Third and four. We're going to trust Quinton Nelson. No, no, no. Horrible. Horrible. We're going to have to punt. We're going to have to punt. Probably a bad decision there from me. So we're going to go out and man coverage here. Blake Bortles keeps it. Fumble the ball. Blake Bortles has kept it. Like, I think that's the third time today. He's got 32 yards on the ground. We just haven't been able to hit him. When he's run, we just haven't been able to hit him. Big tackle for loss by Anthony Walker. I think that's the first time we've tackled Leonard Fournette behind the line of scrimmage today. That's a false start, surely. It is another false start. Second and 17. And we're going to send... The two linebackers. I want to put pressure on even more now. Oh, and it's going to be a, a draw right up the middle. Let's get there. We do manage to get there. Third and 14 for the Jags now. We're going to drop Komoko Ture into coverage. And they hit us right over the middle. The one place that we're not. The one place on the field that we're not. Um, so. What a play. Anthony Walker again stops Leonard Fournette in the backfield. Helps him up for some reason. Leonard Fournette doesn't like it. He doesn't like the fact he's been tackled for an eight-yard loss, I think. So third and 18. Let's just go cover four. In dime. Let's back off. Let's commit to the pass. And again, it's in the one place that we're not. Come on, man. How is that a conversion? How is that a conversion? Verticals against cover four. Surely that's the defensive call against verticals. How do we not have a player in that zone? Oh, that's so frustrating. I feel like we've called... Good plays at good times. I feel like whenever the Jags have made a big play, it's been against the coverage that should shut that play down. I feel like that's been the case multiple times today. But when they've needed it, they have had it, the Jags. They're going to an audible, so are we. And check down underneath again. It's another missed hit stick. I'm getting too aggressive with those. And the Jags are in. For a touchdown. They're going to go up 36-29. We had two opportunities there. Third and very, very long. Two opportunities to make a stop. And the Jags had it both times. It's a very, very close game. We need something here. And it's four yards. Another dangerous throw. I think we have to be looking down the field at some point. 
And instead, we're checking it down to Marlon Mack in the flat, just for two yards. T.Y. Hooten on that backside is fairly wide open. Let's just put him on a... S I've just audibled the play completely. I mean, I was trying to put T.Y. on a slant, so that is what we end up getting. Well, we can't fire it in that time, though, and Andrew Luck has fumbled. The Jags have recovered. The game is over. The game is over on an Andrew Luck fumble. Unique and Gakwe. Became a cult in real life after his stint at the Jags and, and a couple of other teams. The Raiders being one. The Ravens being another. But maybe I should have thrown it away there. I was trying to just find space to throw it to A. A was wide open. So we had nothing on really. There was nothing on. Potentially here I should have just thrown it away. But then I saw A lurking here. Who is that? Is it going to be Ebron? It's going to be Ebron. Just trying to scramble just to get it to Ebron on the run. Instead, it's a strip sack. The Jags recover. Run it in for a touchdown. And that's going to be the game. Got two and a half minutes and we're down two touchdowns. Not sure how this game has got away from us, to be honest. I feel like we were in control for three quarters. Three and a half quarters. And now we find ourselves down 14 points. So the game obviously not entirely gone at this point. But the odds of us getting back into it are long, to say the least. T.Y. Hilton, get down. Get to the line. Another big catch from T.Y. A snap the ball before the two-minute warning. Get lined up. Get lined up. Get it off. Get the snap off. Again, we're going to look for T.Y. Off the hands of the Jags defender. Too deep for the Jags. Don't really like this. But we're going to go for it anyway. It's a Again, off the hands of the Jags defender. I thought it was a good ball from Luck. And it's going to be third and ten from midfield. We need something here. We need something. We're just going to take something. Don't trail in and underneath. We're going to get to the line. It's fourth and four. We obviously have to go for it. And we're going to run mesh spot. We got five yards last time. Five yards would do again this time. Don't think we're going to get it though. Thrown it into traffic. Miles Jack breaks it up. Jags are going to win. How has this game got away from us? I, I don't really understand. The Jags have run all over us. They've had... They continue to run all over us. 16 for 96 today for Leonard Fournette. 11 yards on that somehow. 11 yards on that. They've had... Big conversions when they've needed them. And again, I think the coverage that we ran in those situations was good. We ran cover four against four verticals. And the Jags pick it up. We ran cover two when their two routes, when they had two receivers on one side of the field, one of them went deep and one of them sat in the flat. They threw to that side of the field, yet our Tampa two isn't enough to take that away. And they were both big, big spots in the game. Really impactful spots in the game. So we do go down 43-29 to the Jags. Opening game of the season. Not really sure how that's happened. But happened it has. 330 yards from Blake Bortles is partly how it happened. Uh, 27 of 30 he ended up. That's obviously... Far too high in terms of completion rate. 90%. I mean, 75 is, you know, even towards the top end of what you can really expect. Especially when you throw 41 passes. Three touchdowns, no picks for balls. Two without an interception for Luck. Luck had a really good game, to be fair. He fumbled late in the game trying to make a play when maybe the better option was to throw it away. Um, I thought Marlon Mack had a big day. I thought we ran... All over the Jags, really. But 22 attempts for 78 yards. It's only three and a half a carry, which I like. Naheem Hines had 6.2 per carry. So I think 
run blocking for the user is, is actually probably good where it is. Leonard Fournette had six yards an attempt, which, I mean, isn't awful. That can happen, you know, on a game-to-game -game basis. Average that over the course of the season, and, and it gets a little unrealistic. But in a one-off game, that's, that's not too far out there. In terms of receiving, T.Y. Hilton had a big day. We need plenty more of those from him this season. 11 for 133 and a touchdown. Leonard Fournette caught a touchdown. Keelan Cole had a massive day as well. 6 for 139. Dontrell Inman was fine. Um, Eric Ebron was fine. Caught a touchdown as well. And then defensively. Let's just check out what we did defensively. Three tackles for loss for Anthony Walker. On nine total tackles. 11 tackles. A tackle for loss and a sack for Darius Leonard. Sack for Jabal Sheard as well. And then one split between... Nate Hairston and Kamoko Ture. No interceptions for us. No forced fumbles for us. Just the one forced fumble for the Jags. So, big defeat to the Jags in week one of the NFL season. We're going to have to try and get back on track here. As we enter week two against, I believe, the Texans. Probably going to make a couple of slight changes to the sliders. Based on what I saw in that first game. Um, the false start penalty, for example, coming down is going to be one. And then I might make a few changes gameplay-wise here and there. Nothing too drastic, though. I thought that played fairly realistically. We're going to have to try and find something we can do. Anthony Walker, I forgot all about this, but he had a camp standout. Um, what do you call it? Scenario. And he had three tackles for loss, so we would have hit that. So we got 10,000 XP. And I believe his scenario is going to continue into next week. Key to victory, we obviously didn't win, so that's going to be meaningless. But let's move into week two and the Texans. And let's see what we need to do. I think I'll actually leave what we need to do with Anthony Walker, just so I don't forget what we need to do um, next week. But we will leave it there for week one of the 2019 Colts franchise. Big, big. Divisional matchup, second divisional matchup to start the season against the Texans coming in episode two. JJ Watt obviously going to be a big threat there. So we will look to hit T.Y. Hilton as we did in the first week. We'll look to get the ball moving on the ground with Marlon Mack a little bit more as well. And we will look to shut down Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins. So we'll look forward to that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.